Derek Young, we have spent all of our podcast time so far previewing K-State talking just offense, talking just the points, talking touchdown passes, touchdown runs, all the pretty boy stuff. Finally, let's talk about some Scotty Hazleton and some defense. Are you are you one of those guys who wants to talk offense, though? I, nah, man, I, I don't know I if I have a preference. Lean, I think you lean. I think you're a slight offensive lean. I think you. I don't know. We've never talked about this. I think you're a slight offensive guy. Am I? I don't know. I just feel like you are. I just feel like you get a little bit of a, a twinkle in your eye, oh, you know, when we're talking yeah. about, about O-line and that kind of stuff. But today, it is the defensive line. We'll cover both defensive tackle and defensive end. Um, to start us off, D.Y., is this K-State's best position group defensive line when you look at guys like Reggie Walker, Wyatt Hubert, Trey Deshaun, Joe Davies, etc. Is this is this their best position group? It's their deepest. I don't know if it's their best. I mean, well, I'll tell you, one guy who would tell you it probably was, it's Reggie Walker. Uh, at Big 12 Media Days, Reggie Walker, who was a first-team All-Big 12 selection, was very comfortable telling the media that he thought K-State would have the best defensive line in the Big 12. I think that's, you know, uh, it's not crazy. We'll talk about why that could be a possible thing, but in, in general, that's pretty high praise. Let's start at tackle, okay? Let's start at tackle and work our way through. We'll get to Reggie Walker and those guys in a second. We know Trey Deshaun's going to start at a defensive tackle spot. You've got two other options, Joe Davies and Jordan Mitty who could, of course, play the other one. Looking at snap counts last year, just to give you and I'll let you talk about these guys, Jordan Mitty played 363 snaps last year for K-State. Joe Davies less at 314. If you're looking at their PFF grades, that's where I'm stealing all these stats from. On the 363 snaps for Jordan Mitty, he graded out a 66.4 at the 314 for Joe Davies, 75.5. So let's start this, this episode, which is, of course, sponsored by Tallgrass Tap House, Harry's, and Bourbon and & Baker. By putting you on the spot, who should be K-State's other starting defensive tackle? I would say Joe Davies, if we're just going off last year. I think that despite some of the, the I guess, coaching preference a year ago, I did not think that it was very close. I thought Joe Davies right. was uh, clearly better than Jordan Mitty, and I think that the games were he played more than not, I think that their defense was far better. I, I would agree. Um, I will give Jordan Mitty credit in the sense that I, I'll be uh, privately, I was probably pretty hard on him early last season. I thought he did get better um, mm-hmm. over the course of the season and got to the point where, where I'm exactly like you, where I said, man, this isn't even a competition. Like, I mean, Joe Davies is significantly better. Why is this happening? To where I still think Davies is the better player, um, but I, I understand why there's a competition. A random note, Joe Davies had the highest tackle rating of any Wildcat last year. For the defensive tackle spot, he was the most sure tackler they had. The reason I like Davies, and I agree with you, um, I think he's more consistent, and I think even more than Trey Sean. He's not a better player than Trey Sean, but I think out of K-State's three defensive tackles, I think he's the best interior pass rusher. Yeah, he's easily the better pass rusher of anyone that's played this far. And, and, and another reason why I do say that this is the deepest unit on the field for K-State, I think this is the only unit, well, maybe I'll take that back, but one of the units where they didn't lose anybody from a season ago. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's bits and pieces, but for the most part, everybody who, who was a major contributor last year came back. Trey Deshaun, a guy who I, I did not, I'll be honest, I did not vote first team All-Big 12, but I thought there was a chance he would he would show up on that list. Um, I think he's an All-Big 12, you know, uh, competitor for that kind of thing. He played over 600 snaps last year. I think he's a guy that I probably have underrated a little bit and maybe taken for granted and is a better player than sometimes than maybe K-State fans give credit for or bring up. Because you're so used to, it's like, Will Gary was all Big 12 first team every year. And since Trey Deshaun's not that, you know, it feels like a drop-off. But I think Deshaun's a pretty good player. Yeah, I think he's better than what I give him credit for. I actually think that we probably underrate him and that the fans might have it right because I think the fans think that he's better that's someone that is worth, you know, a lot of mentioning because yeah. at least on our, on our message board anyway, and talking to other people, I think he does get brought up a fair amount and a decent amount more than I, I guess I kind of anticipate. But at the end of the day, I think that I'm probably the one that just doesn't rate him appropriately. And I think he'll probably have more opportunities to be even better this year. I think, and, and I fall into this trap. And I've been saying I fall into a trap almost on every podcast. So this is the stop one. doing it. This is the one at this position. I probably fall in trap because he's not necessarily uh, a flashy correct player. Correct. Um, we know Deshaun's going to start. We know Davies and me will both play a lot. I mean, I don't know who's going to start. I would suspect Davies, but they'll both play a lot. Who do you think will be K State's fourth defensive tackle? I think the easiest name to say or safest might be Drew Wiley, played as a true freshman at K State. Kind of an interesting path. 
But what about an Eli Huggins or even a Jalen Pickle? Who's going to be the fourth D tackle? And again, as you're listening to this pod on Saturday, we recorded this before the Monday open practice. So if DY is saying something different on the site, don't give him guff. But who do you like as the fourth D tackle there? It's probably just – it is a shot in the dark because I haven't actually been told anything to suggest that – it to be the case, but and people on the board will not be surprised that they're listening to this for me to say Jalen Pickle. And that's more of me just kind of looking at their defensive tackles. And the defensive tackle that looks the most the part on this roster in terms of, man, this guy looks great. Like he looks like a monster. It is Jalen Pickle, and it's really not that close. Yep. That's who I would say if I'm a K State fan, I would want it to be because yeah. I think he best case scenario. Yep, looks the part the best, best build, probably gives him the most highest potential. upside. Exactly. Yeah. Now, um, but, I don't know if it'll be him or not, but I mean, I think yeah, I think if you're looking for a positive thing, if you could see a kid like that with the build he has pop up and play, that'd be a good sign. Yeah, and I guess the bold prediction I would make in terms of defensive tackle is because we kind of know what Joe Davies and Jordan Mitty are, and for all intents and purposes, this is not to take a shot at either one. But in most rosters, I think they would probably be the third and the fourth. Second. Third, yeah, third, second or third, third stringers, probably. Second and third stringers, with, while Deshaun would probably be a borderline starter just about right. everywhere else. So I think the bold prediction at defensive tackle to make, and it's probably not far from happening, is that we're going to see there will be a fourth guy emerge, and he might make a bigger impact than some of the ones we're talking about. That's wise. I think you're probably right. And that's, again, not to pile on those two guys, Davies and Mitty, of course, because um, they do a lot of good things for K-State and certainly will make plays this year. But, yeah, I think neither of them will probably be so good that they're just locked in as a starter if, if a guy like Jalen Pickle or even Drew Wiley, you know, like we said, played as a true freshman, really takes a big, big jump. D.Y., as I'm going to say this, I'm pretty sure we'd be safe to talk about, you know, the true freshman at D-Tackle on this podcast by Saturday, August 10th, mm-hmm. because they've got just one. Uh, Matthew Paolo Mao is at K-State. Kenny Gibbons is Derek Young broke on our site oh, late July sometime. Uh, will not be at K-State this year. He'll instead be attending junior college. Um, you've got, we've listed off one, two, three, four, five, six names ahead of Paolo Mao, at least from a class perspective. But he's a guy, again, unless, you know, Wiley or Huggins, um, really fit in well into this system. It wouldn't be wild, you know, to wonder if he could have a chance to play a couple games. Maybe not enough to burn a red shirt, but maybe he could be a guy they could use up front of the defensive line if his body's in good enough shape at this point in his career. Yeah, I think that it'll probably be something they would want to do was get him out there at least not not enough to burn his red shirt. You want to keep that probably uh, in the holster. Uh, but at the same time, when you're going to lose half your defensive tackle room, mm-hmm. it's probably wise to see what you got with each one, at least at some point in the season. And you had written, I think, so cleverly. They they were trying really hard to get ahead of that last year by signing the big defensive tackle or bigger than than maybe it looked like they would have needed for help this year. Um, so that's that. I don't know if that's an issue, but yeah, it does change. You know, the numbers there for sure. It's an issue with recruiting for right. this year. Well, it's a, a spot with more emphasis in the second half. Let's here. talk recruiting at D tackle before we jump to D end because I do think it's changed things. You know, I mean, I think at one point I had written they'll take two and be done, but that was before, of course, Kenny Givens uh, was lost to junior college at least for some period of time and then Taylor Warner a guy who we all think is a defensive tackle and ultimately believes his spot they're gonna fight their uh butts off for him to get him on the offensive side too so you're not even sure he's a D tackle the only guy committed it we know is a D tackle is Ronald Triplett so a couple of nice players there in Triplett and Warner maybe talk about them a little bit but they probably have work left to do at this position now because of the loss of Givens and and Warner's versatility yeah Triplett's not going to play right away he's a project and someone that they're going to have to put a lot more weight yep. on to play that position um I mean, he's even listed as a D end in the in the in the admin. He's yeah. a D tackle, but yeah, he's yeah. a little bit of a, a tweener that they're going to try to make into a three tech defensive tackle. Uh, Kenny Gibbons didn't make it, uh, and then Taylor Warner, which I know that there's a big push to maybe try to get him on the offensive side of the ball now. But man, with the numbers being what they are, there might be more press. The numbers to put sure him in suggest D tackle makes more especially sense, especially because they're going to need, need. I mean, here I'll put it this way: these tackles became as become such a, a point of emphasis now or as much of a need because I think they only have six or seven. They're going to lose three to graduation. Right. And right. who knows you know, what four, you got yeah. what you got in those three or four. So at this second half of the recruiting cycle, defensive tackle might be more important than offensive tackle at this point, at least beyond 2020. Like, and maybe you don't, you shouldn't put a player at a spot he's not better at just to help out a roster or whatever, but it's, but it's not hard to see why it makes more sense at D tackle. So look at, we talked to O-line, you know, on Wednesday, it's pretty easy. You could pencil in with some comfort 
Josh Rivas and, and excuse me and Ben Adler as your starting guards mm-hmm. um, in uh, in 2020. It's hard to pencil in your starting D tackles for 2020 right now because your top three are gone. So you're suggesting it's going to be, and I'm not saying it can't be these guys, but you're having to project a lot onto guys who haven't played either at all or very much in Drew Wiley and Jalen Pickles. So yeah, if all things being equal, it would make excessively more sense to me for Taylor Warner to play on the defensive line. From a number standpoint, from a, an immediate need standpoint, absolutely. And, and and that's why this year, man, best thing for Kansas State is someone else kind of emerges and makes that jump at defensive tackle because they're left at a, quite a loss in 2020, if not. I think, D.Y., if I had been smart enough to also, break this up. Also, gonna... I was going to say, also makes Juco probably in the, a possibility in the, uh, absolutely almost a likelihood of defensive tackle i thought you were going to take a little quip at my intelligence there when i said if i was smart enough but you didn't do it no you're a nice guy if i was smarter when i said is the defensive line like the strongest position on k-state's team and you're like i don't know i might have been like is defensive end k-state's best position group on the team because i would i would go to bat for that you've got your, your only first team all your only all big 12 selections at that position but white Hebert's probably your best player and he's also at that position Kyle Ball has started a bunch. I don't, I don't think there's a – I can't think of a single position that I feel better about. That, and I'm not even saying it's an elite unit, but then defensive end for K-State. Uh, it's pr- probably the best answer. And it's funny that I sit back and think about it. I almost want to say, man, we're not. We're probably undervaluing their offensive line because that's the only thing I sat there and thought about. It's like maybe yeah, that's in contention. Yeah, experience-wise, it's the only one that touches Maybe it, that's right. in contention. But uh, – uh, I agree with you, but that means Reggie Walker needs to go back to freshman Reggie yep. Walker, and Kyle Ball needs to do more than he did last year. No doubt about it. Yeah. I think I think it's the thing, but I think I think even their floors are higher. You know, like if Reggie Walker and Kyle Ball are the same players as last year, that won't be good because K State needs them to get better. But I think their floors are the highest on the team too, and I think their ceiling's the highest because I think, and I know you were on White Hebert before I was, so I'm not trying to sound smart here, but. I think it's he's the guy in the roster too that has the biggest NFL ceiling mm-hmm. on this team. So I think you're going to probably get some star power from this unit, whether it comes from Reggie Walker playing like an All Big Twelve player or Wyatt Hubert, you know, blowing up as a sophomore. Um, and we didn't even mention Boo Massey. You know, I mean, he's a guy who's played. He played as a redshirt freshman. He played a lot in that Oklahoma State game. They won in Stillwater a couple of years ago. He's played last year. So you have four guys that I think you have reason to feel relatively good about. Yeah, that, and I think Spencer Trussell might have actually passed Boom Massey. So, and he played a, a little bit as a true freshman last year too. In case they used him a little bit, and I think a TCU game perhaps. Mm-hmm. I think that, yeah, I think that was the one, and it might have been another one after that. But they're pro- they're in good hands here. Um, if it all works out the way it's supposed to, I wonder if this is another spot where we hear a new name emerge because uh, as many pass rushers that they like to get on the field and, and not all of these guys are necessarily pass rushers. Right. Well, and that makes an interesting point too, that I kind of meant to bring up and de-tackle, but now's as good a time as any, you know, you look at last year's snap counts on PFF and the, I think defensive ends had four of the top six snap counts on the defensive line because K-State loved to use the jet package so much. So guys like Massey and ball played more snaps than they really would have if they were just defensive ends in a traditional sense. Um, the point I'm getting at though is well, I think it makes it even more right that you're probably going to see a new name at D-Tackle, like you said, because I don't think K-State's going to just default to jet package. I know they're not because they said they won't on every third down possession. So, one, it may limit some of the opportunities for defensive ends um, and make them play a little bit differently. And then a guy like Spencer Trussell, yeah, if he's better than a, than a Boo Massey, all of a sudden that fourth D-end may not play a ton in this system. That's true, yeah. Um, the other name we haven't mentioned that's on scholarship is Cartez Crook Jones, a uh, real physically gifted guy, you know, who I know you watched a number of times in high school. Um, but he's still, again, still, I think sometimes fans get like, hey, man, where's, what about Cartez Crook Jones? He's still a redshirt freshman, you know, like Daniel Green is. He's not a guy who's been here forever. But what are your thoughts on what he's done so far at K State or what you're hearing about him? He's been fighting the injury bug most yep. of the time he's been there. So I think that's just limited limited how quickly he's been able to progress and develop to be honest so you look at it starters let's let's list them off we would say walker deshaun davies hubert and then our second it sounds like you and i'm not trying to put words in your mouth again but probably you would probably go trussell ball Mm -hmm. at end and then tackles probably midi and the, that other one is just all projection. Yes. You know what I mean? Because Wiley is the oldest and the most experienced, but he didn't play very much last year. Eli Huggins is older, didn't play very much. I'd, I'd be tempted to Huggins, say Jalen Pickle. Huggins has been hurt. Right. Wiley played so much less the sophomore year than he did his freshman year. And Pickle, we haven't heard necessarily anything. He right. just looks like a million bucks just when, looks you, great. When, you, when you look at him on a football field 
with pets or without pets, I would be pressed to say pickle, but there's really no information that we're drawing that right. from. Right. And then we talked about each one. We've done a good job of kind of talking about where this where this unit rests within the Big 12 a little bit. We kind of opened this with Reggie Walker says it's the best defensive line of the Big 12 by far. Um, I don't think that's to be the case. But if you were going to make an argument for one of K-State's you know, position groups being in the top three or four in the Big 12, this is probably the one I would I would go with. Yep. I think this is this is the one they're they're much better on their lines than anywhere else on the football field you know and that's a funny conversation too because if you're going to be good somewhere it's nice to be good up front on both ends yeah and then next year it's going to flip you know because you're going to lose so much senior experience Deshaun, Mitty, Davies, Reggie Walker and then the five offensive line we talked about last putts you're going to lose nine seniors off those two groups um, to where we'll have a lot of experience back at the skill positions, but not as much on the lines in 2020. We're about, we're, we'll talk about them in our next podcast, but the neat thing about the next year that no one would have foresaw, and some of it was because of something that unfortunately happened right. in the spring, but the best position possibly next year, offense or defense for Kansas State, could be linebacker. They're going to have more experience than they've had for a while. They're going to have certainly, it's almost so, impossible to have less depth. They'll probably you know, have a they, decent amount of depth because of the right way now. Cody Fletcher and Daniel Green will have to play this year, and then you get Elijah Sul- Sullivan back this year, and then next year you get Justin Hughes back. They're just going to be better right. out of just circumstance. Absolutely. Before we wrap this up, again, thanks to all of our sponsors, Tallgrass Tap House, Bourbon and Baker, Harry's for the support they gave us. It sincerely is appreciated. I want to talk recruiting at DN for just a second. K-State's first commit of the year came from a DN, Nate Matlack, who I I know you've always thought pretty highly of. I really, really like. I, I think he's one of, if not the best players in the class. Um, brief thoughts on Matlack and then what might still be left for them to do at defensive end. Really good player. If he was athletic enough, they'd probably not um, force it as much to put some weight on and make him a defensive end and he could just play linebacker right. because he's kind of a, a very frail frame in terms of uh like six four two ten, i think is his, yeah at least official listed size just, right now just in terms of bulk he basically has zero of it now which means there is a lot of room for, for growth but he definitely has some filling out to do but he does very well for what he has right now and someone that's probably going to take an excess of you know, probably a little over two years, I right. think, to probably, you know, start to impact a depth chart at all. And uh but that's all they have a defensive end. They've swung and missed on a few that it seemed like they were going to land, one being Lunell Carr, um, out of St. Louis that yep. they lost to West Virginia. I think that they felt good about that and it just didn't go their way. Um but they're still chasing some. They're looking at Akeem Mesador out of Clearwater, Florida. They're looking at uh Reagan Terry out of yep. Pinnacle, Arizona. So those are probably two that are the most in their crosshairs at, at this point, but they're definitely going to add have to add one or two more defensive ends to this class and probably even more defensive tackles. Yeah, at least with our numbers, you know, that we were looking at early on, I think we were thinking they would add two to three defensive ends. They've only done one so far. Um, but yeah, I think similar to offensive line, maybe a total of five or six mm-hmm. in there. And the good news is they're halfway there, you know, with Taylor Warner, Ronald Triplett, um, and then Nate Matlack, if you take two more, you're at five. That's how math works. Pretty easy. So they're not in a bad spot here for sure. But, yeah, still need still help needed on the defensive line. Yeah, they're going to have to uh, emphasize every level of the defense here in the second half of recruiting, whereas in the offense, they are you know they might be done at running back. They are done at quarterback. Uh, they only need one more at wide receiver. Yep. They're done at done each at t- back and, t- tight, and tight end. end. Yeah. But on defense, it's like, well, we still need a few defensive uh, linemen. We still need a, another linebacker. We still need at least one defensive back. And who knows what's going to happen with McColvin on as, he, begin, as right. he continues to form with other schools. So there's still every level of the defense is, is not off limits uh, in the, with the rest of the 2020 cycle. So like us, K-State went offense first, you know, finished up all their offensive work. We did our offensive pods and then moved on the defense. It was the go. right way to do it. Uh, for Derek Young, I appreciate his his help here as always. Appreciate Flando who's running this right now and getting this set up for us. Thank you for listening to the KSO show. Hope you subscribe to Chaos on K State Online. <laughs> I don't know if I was going to combine KSO into KSO Online or something like that. Um, but yeah, season's about to start. Uh, I think it's a, a great time to look at our site. If you're somebody who, you know, if you're somebody who you know just doesn't care about who the backup quarterback is or who's going to play next year that kind of stuff maybe it isn't for you and i'll be respectful of that but if that's the stuff you care about and you want to know about um i think it's a good site for us if nothing else 
because uh, of the message board and all the help we're able to have shared on there. I think it's worth doing. So for Derek Young, I'm not making him say the line this time. I'm going to do it. I'm Matt Hall, and I would appreciate it if you would take the time to just tell your friends about us.